Welcome back to chemistry. In our last lesson, we learned how the atom went from being this philosophical idea over 2,000 years ago to being a fact of the natural world that we can sense and even see. In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss what we know today about atoms and what atoms are like. Well, if we start, we might think of an atom as looking like this. And this is a pretty good rudimentary idea to th uh, or way to think of an atom. We know that atoms have protons, and protons are these uh, positively charged particles uh, that are part of the nucleus, and the nucleus is this thing here in the middle. And then we have the neutrons. The, the, the neutrons are uh, particles that don't have any charge. They're not positive or uh, negative. They're just neutral, and they're also uh, clumped in there with the neutrons in the nucleus. And then we have these electrons. And the electrons are these negatively charged particles that are on the outside of the atom, and they're uh, buzzing around the nucleus in an area or a region that's called the electron cloud. And so maybe you've seen a picture like this before, but you know there's a little problem with this picture. The fact is it's not drawn to scale. And so even though it's a, a nice, easy way to help us think of an atom, it's really not drawn to scale. So let's maybe think of an atom that is drawn to scale. So let's imagine that we're going to make a model of an atom and scale it up to the size of this football stadium here. This is a pretty big stadium. Well, if an atom were the size of that stadium right there, the nucleus would be a dime on the 50-yard line. So right in here, you, you can imagine a tiny little uh, dime that's the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. And the electrons would be about the size of grains of sand that are buzzing around in the stands through here. And so that is your model of an atom that's really to scale. And so what's the, the meaning of this? Well, it tells us that uh, over 99.99999% of an atom is actually empty space. That actually tells us that uh, almost all of, of matter, almost all of your body, almost everything in the earth is actually empty space. So when we think about the model of an atom drawn to scale, the fact is that this model that you've uh, seen maybe in other classes or in, uh, in your uh, earlier uh, life, maybe in middle school or in elementary school, that traditional model really isn't even being close to being drawn to scale. The fact is that protons and neutrons are about 1800 times as massive as electrons. And so electrons are extremely, extremely tiny. And protons and neutrons are much larger than them. But even those are very, very tiny and we can't even imagine how small they are. Well, if we talk about atoms, we know that in nature there are a total of about 90 uh, building blocks that are called elements. These are the types of atoms that exist, almost uh, uh, basically like brands of atoms if you want to think about them that way. And we know that every element is different from every other element. And so if we think of some elements like carbon and oxygen and neon and hydrogen, well, each one is different from the other. And we can find a listing of all the elements in the world on the periodic table. And so this is a representation, a very common representation of the periodic table. And so if you look at this at this particular periodic table, we can see that it has uh, all 90 of the elements that exist in the natural world, plus about 30 or so other elements that are made synthetically. Uh, they're uh, made in laboratories and don't exist in nature. And so on our current periodic table, we have about 118 elements as of the time that I recorded this video. And all the time, scientists are trying to make new elements. And so we have 118. Well, they're trying to make 119 and 120 and, and even beyond that. Now, this is a very common uh, periodic table. The periodic table that you might have uh, on the wall in your chemistry classroom or in your textbook or, or just that you print off of the internet might look a little bit different from this. Uh, some periodic tables look a little different from others. So we're going to look at some of the facts that every periodic table will have. So here's, a, here's a common element that we're going to look at. We're going to zoom in on lithium here, which is the third element. And we're going to zoom in on its periodic table square. And like I said, on your periodic table, the numbers might be in slightly different places. Uh, your periodic table might have the names of the elements. It might not. 
but pretty much every element uh, square on the periodic table has to have the symbol. And so Li, of course, is the symbol for lithium, and it's going to be featured quite prominently on the periodic table square. I want you to notice that there's a number up there. There is a whole number, and that's called the atomic number. So it's not a decimal number, it's a whole number. It's called the atomic number, and that number right there tells us how many protons are in the atom. It also tells us how many electrons are in that atom. And so that is the atomic number, one of the very uh, basic facts about an element that's listed on the table. And then there's another number. Notice that there's a decimal number down here, which in this case is 6.941, and that's called the atomic mass. Some textbooks call it the atomic weight. Uh, those are interchangeable terms. The atomic mass is a decimal value, and if you take that number and round it off to the nearest whole number, so in this case that would be about equal to 7, that's going to tell us the sum of the protons and neutrons in a typical atom of the element. So what that means is, you know, protons will be this number, electrons will be that number. Well, to find the neutrons, you have to take the 7 and subtract 3. And so if we were to do this little exercise here, we could fill this in pretty easily and say that an atom of lithium has 3 protons. That's the atomic number. It has 3 electrons. That's the atomic number. The neutrons will be 7 minus 3, which is equal to 4. And so a typical atom of lithium has 3 protons, 3 electrons, and 4 neutrons. Well, let's try another example. Let's try carbon, a very fundamental element. And we're going to determine protons, electrons, and neutrons using its periodic table square. So once again, the protons will be equal to the atomic number. So that's this number right here, which is 6. And the electrons will be the same as the protons. So it's also the atomic number. It's also 6. And then we have neutrons. Well, to find neutrons, we have to round off this atomic mass, which is about 12, and then subtract the atomic number, 6. So 12 minus 6 is 6. So for carbon, the answer is 6, 6, 6. Protons, electrons, neutrons. Let's try zinc. Element number 30. So the number of protons is its atomic number. So that's going to be 30 protons. The number of electrons will also be 30. And the number of, of neutrons will be 65 minus 30. So 65 minus 30 is 35. So we can see a typical atom of zinc is going to have about 35 neutrons. Let's try one more example. Strontium. This is the 38th element on the periodic table. And so protons will be the atomic number again. 38. How many electrons? Also 38. And neutrons, we have to round this number off, the atomic mass, off to the nearest whole number, which is 88. We have to round up, since it's uh, that next uh, tens place is a 5 or higher. And then we subtract 38, atomic mass minus atomic number. And so the number of neutrons is how many? It is 50. Typical number of neutrons in a strontium atom is 50. So hopefully, at the end of this lesson, you have a better idea as to the scale of an atom, what uh, the protons and neutrons are like in the nucleus, and how the electrons are much smaller. And also, you can take any element on the periodic table and determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in a typical atom of that element. Well, I hope you join me again for another lesson in chemistry.